Coming up on The Shield, BUTV sits down with the Office of Alcohol and Drug Education as part of Alcohol Awareness Month. And Boston Police reports multiple deaths and injuries near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. That and more, you're watching The Shield on BUTV. Broadcasting from Schnabel Hall on the beautiful campus of Valparaiso University, you're watching The Shield on VUTV. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Amy Vander Hayden. And I'm Dave Caulfield. The Associated Press has reported multiple explosions near the finish line in the Boston Marathon. Boston Police reports multiple deaths and injuries with a special report on this tragedy. We hand it over to Lauren Hilko. Lauren? Thanks, Dave. Monday early afternoon, two bomb explosions happened at the finish line during the Boston Marathon. About 176 people were injured and three were killed, including 8-year-old Martin Richard, 29-year-old Crystal Campbell, and the other has yet to be identified. According to law enforcement officials, both bombs were pressure cookers filled with nails, bits of plastic, and black powder. President Barack Obama announced at the White House that the FBI is investigating the attack to be quote, an act of terrorism, end quote. It is still unclear as to whether the attack was either domestic or foreign. At this time, investigators, Boston police, and the FBI are currently evaluating numerous amounts of images and videos taken from the explosion. Stay tuned to our Facebook and Twitter accounts for the latest updates. Our thoughts and prayers here at VAPO are with the people of Boston. Back to you guys. Thank you, Lauren, for your continued coverage on this awful, awful tragedy. This past weekend, the Valparaiso University men's and women's choirs held a recital in the VUCA lobby. Admission for this event was free and open to students and the Valpo community. Conducted by Professor Christopher Koch, Director of Choral and Vocal Activities at Valpo, as well as lecturer Maura Janton Koch, the men's and women's choirs presented Portuguese and Spanish pieces. The event was put together by the Valparaiso Music Department as part of their spring calendar. The next event will be held in Duesenberg Recital Hall Sunday, April 21st at 2 p.m. This event is also free of admission and open to the public. Last week, students and faculty gathered, gathered in the Union Ballrooms for a panel discussion on careers in the field of art and graphic design. The event was put together by the Career Center and the Art Department. Four panelists, including Valpo alum J.P. Avila, told how they started working in the art and design industry. The floor was then open for students to ask questions and seek advice. Many students asked about networking and how to find work in a highly competitive industry. The panelists pointed towards using social networking sites such as Facebook, Craigslist, and LinkedIn to find openings in art studios and freelance work. They also stressed the importance of having a digital portfolio and web presence to showcase their work to future employers. As a continued theme here on VU TV, all April we have been bringing you stories about alcohol and its impact on college students. VU TV's Executive Director Brendan Kinney sat down with Natalie Muskin Press, a staff member at the Counseling Services here on campus, who shared facts about college drinking. I am responsible for any sort of drug or alcohol outreach that anybody requ um, requests, as well as just anything we choose to provide. We provide some introductory information for freshmen every year at Party House. I also do individual drug and alcohol treatment for anyone who comes to me and needs help. And then I also do our um, care class, which is a class we've developed for students who've had some trouble with alcohol, either they've been arrested or they've had just com um, continued violations of dorm policy, things like that. And then I also oversee Bacchus Gamma, which is the peer educator group for um, responsible decision making. And they do the SUDS program for dorm, um, first time violators of dorm policy. Um, I think what there is, is there's a lot, of, a lot of confusion about, one, how to sober someone up. So you hear a lot of things like, you know, give them water, give them food. And that's kind of a trying to put the horse back in the barn kind of way of dealing with it. And so what you have is, is this kind of confusion of like you can you can fix it once it's happened. And so, but once someone has, has drank too much, all you can do is wait until the alcohol runs out of their system. You can't sober someone up faster. You can't you can't make the alcohol stop working in their system, is a big one. And just a big miss perception, I think, about drinking in general and how much drinking occurs. 
Uh, studies have consistently shown that college students as a whole always um, always assume that people drink more than they do. So even if they're drinking um, like it, um, a moderate amount, which most studies show that most students don't binge drink, they always assume that the average student is drinking way more than they do. So there's just this perception and myth that coming on to college means you binge drink three nights a week and that's you know eight to ten drinks and it's getting drunk all the time and so there's always this belief that it's a it's it's a bigger lifestyle issue than it actually is if you're concerned about your drinking you can always come to our office I'm located in the counseling center so you can either call at 464-6820 and make an appointment with me you can walk in when we're open our office hours are eight to noon and then one to five Monday through Friday if you're concerned about people you can always call and talk to me about how to approach it um, a couple of things I always tell people to look out for is um, abdication of responsibility. So when you see someone who's really had a lot of stuff that's really important to them and gradually bit by bit some of that starts to fall by the wayside. So maybe they quit a sports team or they drop out of a, an, an important position or they stop doing something that they were passionate about then their excuse is generally something like, oh, like I just didn't have time for it or oh, you know, like a lot of times when people are drinking too much, um, rather than be faced constantly with the fact that like oh my drinking is getting in the way of me being effective in the rest of my life they cut out the things in the rest of their life so they don't have to, to face that and they usually come up with some reason for it like it's stupid or I don't have time for that or, I don't really like it anymore but you could usually see if as your friends like partying increases the rest of their personality and the rest of the parts that make them unique start to decrease so if all of their the things that made them them start to kind of not be like nurtured in the way they normally were and only thing that you seem to see about them is like bare minimum responsibility and going out and partying that's a really big warning sign that the alcohol consumption in college is kind of taking over that was just a brief part of our interview tune in all this month to channel 82 to watch the entire interview you can also check out our youtube page for that and more vu tv programming for a quick check of your valpo weather forecast Storm Shield meteorologist Blaze Keller is in the Storm Shield Weather Center. Hello, Blaze. Thanks, guys. Well, we've been seeing showers falling for much of April, so hopefully we'll be seeing some May flowers sprouting in the next couple weeks. However, we are seeing some cooler temperatures hang around as well as the chance for a wintry mix, and I'll let you know when to expect that coming up in my five-day forecast. Back to you guys. Thanks, Blaze. After these commercials, we'll have a look at your Valpo weather forecast as well as national news and sports. Stay tuned, you're watching The Shield here on TV.
The Valparaiso University Meteorology Program gives you the scientific knowledge of a big university while keeping the small college atmosphere. At Valpo, you have the opportunity to take meteorology courses every semester throughout your college experience. Our approachable faculty are among the best in their field, and the small student to professor ratio promotes individualized learning and a family environment. Valparaiso's extracurriculars encourage specialization in all aspects of weather, including research, operational, aviation, and broadcasting. Students receive hands-on experience forecasting, launching weather balloons, using our on-campus dual polarization Doppler radar, and even chasing storms. Our alumni serve in all areas of meteorology, from researchers at universities, to forecasters at the National Weather Service, to Good Morning America. Valpo Meteorology, your forecast calls for success. Five people are dead after an accident in Palm Beach County, Florida. The Florida Highway Patrol says a Mercedes coming off the interstate hit a Lexus. They were both traveling in the same direction. All five people inside the Lexus were killed. Four of them were thrown from the car. At least one was a teenager and not wearing a seatbelt. The 21-year-old driver of the Mercedes was taken to a hospital. A third car was also involved, but no one was hurt. Basketball star Kobe Bryant has an injury to his Achilles tendon that could keep him off the court for up to nine months. A Lakers Twitter message says the team trainer hopes Bryant can be back next season. Bryant had said next year may be his last in the NBA. This year is the 16th season for Bryant. The Lakers have two games left in the regular season. Police in the Atlanta area are investigating the shooting of an officer during a routine traffic stop. Officials say the shooter led police on a high-speed chase that ended in a crash on the freeway. They said he shot the officers before he was shot and killed. The road was closed down and traffic was rerouted. A passerby was wounded in the incident. She and the other injured officer were taken to a local hospital. The officer was shot in the shoulder, abdomen, and leg. He is expected to make a full recovery. He originally stopped the suspect for an expired tag. Hungry people in West Africa will soon get a good meal, thanks to alumni of Boston College. Graduates in Dublin, Ireland, and six U.S. cities are gathering to pack meals. The event is part of the university's 150th anniversary celebration. On campus alone, 191,000 meals were packed, well above the school's goal of 150,000 meals. The Colorado teen accused of killing and dismembering 10-year-old Jessica Ridgway pleaded not guilty. Prosecutors say 18-year-old Austin Sig placed some of the girl's body parts in a crawl space of his family's home. Ridgway disappeared while walking to school on October 5, 2012. A break in the investigation came when police say Sig confessed to a 911 operator. As tensions remain high on the Korean Peninsula, Secretary of State John Kerry met with Chinese President Xi Jinping and other leaders in Beijing. Kerry is urging them to pressure North Korea to tone down its provocative threats of nuclear attack on the U.S., South Korea, and their allies. Kerry and Xi discussed North Korea and other global concerns during their meeting. China's state counselor Yang Jiqi says his nation is committed to the denuclearization process on the Korean Peninsula. Yang also says Beijing will work with its international partners to restart the, st the stalled six-party talks in the North's nuclear program and hold it accountable to its international agreements. Valpo area has experienced a roller coaster of temperatures over the past week. Storm Shield meteorologist Blaze Keller joins us in the studio to tell us if this trend will continue. Hello, Blaze. Hey, Amy. Hey, Dave. Well, unlike you guys, I don't like roller coasters, <laughs> so I'm hoping these temperatures start to alleviate and start to level off and feel more spring like. What we're expecting in these next couple days is some more April like showers um, coming through the area, but it's going to finally feel like spring, and with those April showers, coming and dumping a lot of rain. Hopefully we'll see some May flowers start to sprout up in the next couple weeks, as well as a chance for a wintry mix to return. And I'll let you know when to expect that coming up in my five day forecast. 
Taking a look at our in-house model, temperatures later tonight, you can see this tight temperature gradient across the Midwest, 46 in Davenport, 49 here in Valparaiso, but just to our south, 71 in St. Louis, and as we progress, through the night, you can see here's that low pressure system and it's starting to move off to the northeast, 67 in Davenport. And you can see that warmer, more tropical-like air, more spring-like air is starting to make its way back into Valparaiso, 59 by your Thursday morning. However, as we track through the day, Thursday into Friday morning, you can see that here's that cold front that brings back some of those winter-like temperatures. We are at 42 degrees by Friday afternoon and back behind that that's that winter like temperatures I was saying 27 in Sioux Falls and 30 in Rapid City for a high in the afternoon so it's definitely gonna start to feel like winter again in parts of the Midwest before the weekend however tonight it's gonna be 55 degrees is our low stormy those winds are out of the east at 10 miles per hour and as we move on into the Tomorrow, those storms still stick around. However, we are sitting at a comfortable 67 degrees. Those winds shift to the south at 10 to 20 miles per hour, and those will continue to keep us warm as the day progresses. And for your five-day forecast, again, storms on Thursday, a high of 67. Friday, cooler, 45 degrees, and we might see a wintry mix in the morning hours with those cooler temperatures. Saturday, only a little bit warmer if by that 46 degrees and cool sunday heating up to 57 and we're going to see some sunshine and for the start of your week on monday we're sitting at 52 degrees and mild so again that roller coaster is still going on its tracks but hopefully it'll finally come to a stop and we'll start to see spring finally start to stay here for a little bit. Well, that's good because I'm tired of getting out the coat right? again. You know, I thought right? I was going to put it away. I had to break it out the other day and I was not happy about it. Oh. So hopefully well, we can just finally put that away. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Blaze. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back after these commercials with a look at your Crusader sports. Stay tuned. You're watching The Shield on VUTV.
The Valparaiso University Meteorology Program gives you the scientific knowledge of a big university while keeping the small college atmosphere. At Valpo, you have the opportunity to take meteorology courses every semester throughout your college experience. Our approachable faculty are among the best in their field, and the small student to professor ratio promotes individualized learning and a family environment. Valparaiso's extracurriculars encourage specialization in all aspects of weather, including research, operational, aviation, and broadcasting. Students receive hands-on experience forecasting, launching weather balloons, using our on-campus dual polarization Doppler radar, and even chasing storms. Our alumni serve in all areas of meteorology, from researchers at universities, to forecasters at the National Weather Service, to Good Morning America. Valpo Meteorology, your forecast calls for success. Welcome back to The Shield. With a look at all of your Crusader sports, we turn it over now to Shield Sports Director Drew Taylor. Drew? Thanks, guys. The VU softball team came into Sunday with an even 5-5 five five Horizon League record. Crusaders hosted a doubleheader against the UIC Flames. First game was certainly one to forget. The Flames quickly disposed of the Crusaders 10 to nothing, but the underclassmen set the tone for game two. Sophomore Tara McShane doubles to bring home a pair in the first, and freshman pitcher Sarah Pico Goes the distance, allowing just one run on five hits. Valpo takes game two by a score of three to one. The win was not only significant because it was against the first place Flames, but it also snapped a seven game losing streak. The Brown and Gold will continue the Horizon League play this weekend, heading east to face Detroit. First pitch of the series will be Saturday, 11 a.m. The Crusader baseball team hit the diamond Friday at Youngstown State looking to climb themselves out of the fifth place hole they put themselves in Horizon League play. Kyle Schneider, who is hitting 379 on the year, gets things going top second with a flare into center that scored Spencer Mahoney. We fast forward now to the seventh. Tanner Vavra sits back beautifully on this breaking ball and drives it into left for a double and an RBI. Still in the seventh now, check out this throw. Penguins had him dead to rights, but the throw is errant and finds its way into center field. Bavra scores to make it 5-0. Crusaders go on to win by a score of 9-2. Couple of notes worth mentioning in this one. Crusader backstop Billy Cribs throws out three Penguins trying to steal. And Cole Webb earns his first Horizon League win of the year, going six and two-thirds, allowing just two runs on nine hits. Crusaders and Penguins would split the last two of the series, which puts the Brown and Gold at a four and eight clip within league play. Now the beauty of having only a five-team conference is this. You get to schedule a good amount of non-conference opponents. This weekend, the team will be traveling to Tempe, Arizona to face the 24th ranked Arizona State Sun Devils for a three-game series. First pitch Friday at 8.30 local time. Baseball and softball aren't the only teams in action this weekend. You have tennis, track, and golf all in the heart of their seasons. Here is the weekend athletic schedule, and as always, for updates on these games, as well as the rest of Crusader Sports, log on to ValpoAthletics.com. That's it for sports. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Drew. And now with our last check of weather, Storm Shield meteorologist Blaze Keller joins us in the studio. Hello, Blaze. Hey, Amy. Hey, Dave. Well, just a recap of my five-day forecast. We're expecting near 70 on Thursday. However, we will be experiencing some storms on Friday. We cool down dramatically to a high of only 45 and a possible wintry mix in the morning. 46 on Saturday and it's going to be a lot cooler. Sunday we heat up a little bit with a high of 57 and by Monday we start to maybe see some spring like temperatures return with a high of about 52 degrees. So, so old man winter back for one more maybe. He, he always seems like he keeps coming back week after week. Uh, it's I'm awful. Ready. He's it's ready to go. But still spring in the forecast yes. at the end though. Yes. Uh, very good. Thank you please. Mm -hmm. That's going to do it for this edition of The Shield. I'm Dave Caulfield. And to get on-demand VU TV programming, log on to youtube.com slash ValpoVUTV. For everyone here at VU TV, I'm Amy Vanderhayden. Thanks for watching.